Today we're going to talk about some items that most people miss. We're going to talk about a very highly collectible men's piece of jewelry that sells for some insane money. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about another item that many people miss and don't realize some of the value in them. We're going to talk about men's jewelry and specifically cufflinks. Most people haven't a clue even how to use a cufflink nowadays. Most people don't use them. It's something that shows up at estate sales, antique malls, flea markets, garage sales, pretty much anywhere I go. Let's hop over right now and show you some of the insane values on these items. Now with cufflinks, most people think it's going to be vintage items. You would be surprised at how many new cufflinks are made that are high-end that are missed. You can go to the mall sometimes on clearance and find some high-dollar cufflinks that have been marked down locally that would sell online for some good money. Believe it or not, you can source some things at a local shopping mall. This first one here is from 1996, Barry Kesselstein. This is a cord moon and stars. Very fine. This is sterling, $500. Now, designer names obviously are key important factors on most of these. Something else to consider is sometimes the marks are obliterated by how it was put together or the pieces were marked before it was put together, so you may not see the marking very well. You need to look at every single surface of a cufflink to tell if it's marked. Don't just look on the side or on the noticeable areas. Flip it over, look on all the inside seams and everywhere else. You'd be surprised at some of the markings I have found. Now you can find gold, platinum, and sterling cufflinks. Some of them will not be marked due to the age. Now they made cufflinks for pretty much anything you could imagine. Here is a 1967 Major League Baseball All-Star Games with the Angels as the winner of the game. This is an original piece, $500. You can find them for almost any sporting event that you could imagine. Golf, football, baseball, soccer, all of them made similar items. Most sports that are traditional, whether you be a shooter, you collect something, you can find almost any type of cufflink you could imagine. Now this next Next one is a very interesting one. It's the comedy and tragedy masks. A theater professional would probably buy these. Almost $500 in the U.S. they sold for. This is nine carat, which is basically gold filled. Fine, fine quality with some nice stones as well. Now, as I said, figure roll almost always goes very well. Deacon and Francis, I have several in here because they're a newer item. Something you could run into at a store's clearance section still to this day. You don't have to necessarily source these at antique malls, uh, state sales, and things like that. I do find them at auctions, local live auctions, all the time. Sometimes in a whole case full off of someone's dresser. Someone's passed their estate sales up, and you can find a big box of these in most every estate sale that you go to. And as I said, they may not even be marked, so people do pass these up. This is one of those areas that I found quite a few sterling and even some gold versions of these that sold for some insane amounts of money for very, very little investment. Investment. This one went for almost $400. This one is well marked. Very fine quality. Look up that name if you have any questions. Now here's a vintage Gucci. Most every brand that you could imagine that was around back in the day, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, all the way up to today, made cufflinks of some sort. Here is a Gucci. Now they don't go for a fortune as you can see. $300, but it is not made of a precious metal. So you've got to realize that just because the name's on it, it can increase the value. It doesn't have to be precious gold or silver to be worth something. Here's a Burberry. This is a very nice new one. Again, some of these will show up out of the box. You don't have to have the box for them. If you look close enough, you can find some very fine quality designer ones. And again, it's figural, very cute, $250. Here's another one from Disney. This is Pluto. This is something you can find. I have found sterling Disney cufflinks in men's dresser boxes and things like that on several occasions. So this is not something that's a flighty or fantasy thing to think that you could find these because they are out there. Almost $250. This one's in the box. Well-known maker. Even out of the box, you would have still got well over $100 for almost any of the good name brand Disney pieces out there. And again, new, old or not, it does not matter. 
Now here's a George Jensen from Denmark. This is a brand I've talked about many times. I have pieces of Jensen's in-house right this minute. They made all kinds of silver things. If you could have made something out of sterling, they made it. They designed it. Just awesome. Mid-mod century, 50s pieces. Excellent piece. $246 for this set here. Another fine example here. This is probably from the 1910, 20s, or 30s era. By the construction alone, this is the Portugal coat of arms. It's made in sterling. It has gold on it, as well as some fine enamel. This is something that might have been a gift from the country, even. $245. Now, if you didn't dig into this or look up that design, you may not have thought much of this at all. Crests and seals like this, coat of arms, are always worth digging into, especially on a piece of jewelry. Now, here's an interesting one. They're calling it modernist. I wouldn't say necessarily modernist, but it's pecans. This is sterling silver, literally cast, I would gather. Now, they say one of a kind may or may not be as well, but they're very nice either way you go. Any of these realistic looking things, as I said, go for some good money. 245 bucks. These are some hefty ones. It's got 53.5 grams of sterling for this. Look up how much that weighs in ounce wise and you'll see what I'm talking about. Nice example here. Now here's a real early one. This is from the 1880s. They're listing it. Howard Sterling Company. This is sterling silver. They've got it listed as Mikado. I don't think that's the case. Maybe a Kate Greenaway or something along that line. Either way, it's very unique, very interesting. There's several different types of cufflinks, and usually you can tell how old they are by the construction as well, like chains, bars, or something along this line. Some of them actually are spring-loaded, so they snap back once you slide them through the cuff. Now, here's an interesting Taxco from Mexico. Very unique piece, modernist. Now, these sorts come well marked usually. If it's a Taxco piece, I usually see a ton of marks on the back, as you see here. This is signed by someone very well known as well. 240 bucks basically on this one. Now, here's a set from the Ox and Bull Company. Something you should see in modern day department stores still. This is day of the deadline. Even if this is out of the box, they still go very well. Any of these sorts, as long as they are marked, look for that ox and bull marking on the back of these. Now, this is an area to look for in closeouts and discontinueds and things like that. Markdown sections at department stores as well. Now, here's a Ralph Lauren purple label. Again, that's a vintage label for Ralph Lauren buyers. This is a football rugby 925 sterling cufflinks, 225 bucks basically. Again, age, manufacture means a little bit as well. Even if this wasn't sterling, but they were Ralph Lauren, it still would go for some good money. Now, here's an interesting piece. It has a numbered British dirigible airship, a blimp basically in here, probably circa World War I or thereafter. Very unique design, probably a commemorative piece of the launch or something like that. $220. This one's a very fine example. Very nice piece of history, even not as a cuffling set, but again, very nice one to say the least. Now here's a Balvain marked piece from Paris. This is steel. It's bumblebees. Something unique. Again, this doesn't have to come in a box. It doesn't have to be new. Just look for the name on these pieces. You would be surprised at some of the value in the new ones that aren't sterling, that aren't gold, what they can still go for. $200, new with tags, of course. Without the tags and box, you're still looking at a good 100 bucks on something like this. Now here's one of my favorite ones here, Joe Lewis. It's a boxing piece, probably a commemorative piece from one of his matches. The Joe Lewis Arena is in Detroit. It's not too far from here. You know, this is something that shows up in certain areas of the country based on where matches were held at some time. It is marked VS on the bottom. Very nice piece, very unique with the glove on the one side. Something you probably won't run into every day, but it's sold for $200, so well worth looking for. Now, one of the most sought after pieces, as I've said, are the figural ones. Here's a very fine example, Japanese God of Longevity. It's porcelain, it's signed. Very fine example, 180 bucks. There's a bunch of this sort. If you look this up on eBay, you're going to find all kinds of sorts and variations on this, rings and all kinds of things with the same basic design. Here's another signed piece, sterling silver with enamel. This is a newer piece. It retails for $440. It's out of the box. It is marked, though. It's sold for $175. These sorts of things are missed by most people because they'll just look at the design or 
what it is and assume that there's no value, no money to be made. But I buy cufflinks all the time. Cufflinks sell just even generic ones of some sort, as long as they have a unique design, will sell. Sports ones, of course, golfing, anything like that. Figural, though, are the top of my list to look for in here. And as I've said, many of these people won't notice the sterling, the gold, the platinum marks on the bottoms, in the parallel beams behind it, or somewhere marked on it. You really got to dig in and look for the markings on some of these. But I'm telling you, this is one of the best categories in the men's jewelry section you can find. Obviously, tie tacks and tie clips go right along with this and do have some value to them. But cufflinks outrank them for the most part. Now here's a Van Cleef's and Arpels piece. This is a very prestigious French maker. They make some fine quality pieces. This one did sell at $3,400 in that range. It was relisted, but this is just an example of some of these pieces. I would not doubt that this is worth that sort of money. Some of their lesser quality pieces still go for thousands just because of the name, and it's just going to have a VCA marked on it. That might be all you will see on a Van Cleef and Arpels piece. So you got to look diligently for little tiny marks such as that. This goes way back. This is 18 karat solid gold. A very fine example of something like this. And the last one here is a very simple looking one. Cartier, this is a 14 karat gold diamond baton fluted. It probably has diamonds on the side or on the bands. Very unique, very nice piece. These can go for some insane amounts of money. You got to be diligent. You got to check them all out. Just by sheer looks doesn't mean it's not worth anything. I check them all out for markings. I look closely to make sure that it's not a precious metal or that they don't have real stones in them. Sometimes you'll find diamonds and all kinds of things. Real pearls, rubies, emeralds in these as well too. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. So give me a chord. Now, safety rules can be cool if you know what you're looking for. So when I unplug, this lightning bug would never pull the cord. When wires are frayed, I get away and head on down the road. Cause I changed the scene if you know what I mean and lighten this heavy load. You got to be cool with cords, my friend. You got to be cool with cords. You ask me, you got to be. You got to be cool with cords. Yeah. yeah.